Hello, I hope you all well. In this lecture, I would like to talk about stress transformation in Moore's circle. Before we get into it, let's review plain stress transformation. If you take a look at this girder on a bridge, and if we take a look at that, if we take out a cubic volume element of material that represents the state of the stress acting around the beam, the general state of the stress at that point is characterized by six normal and six shear stresses component. In real world engineering practice, most loading are coplanar, and so the stresses these loading produce can be analyzed in a single plane or 2D dimension. When an element is in a plane stress in the XY plane, only the X and Y faces are subjected to a stresses. The uh, stress element is, which is a stress element, are a useful way really to uh, represent the stresses acting on some point on a rigid body, and which are represented by a two normal stress component and one sh shear stress component acting on an element in the same plane. So if we rotate our stress element to a certain degree so we can calculate the stresses at that angle that we will get different value for normal stress and a shear stress and all depend on the orientation angle. So basically our x become x prime and y become y prime and we calculate the sigma x prime and sigma y prime. We can calculate these stresses by using the stress transformation equation. Um, <clears throat> and then we also can calculate the uh, uh, principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, which are the maximum and the minimum normal stresses when the element is rotated to a point where the shear stresses are zero. So we see a lot of formula right here to be calculated. However, you can use Mohr circle, which is developed by a German engineer, uh, Otto Mohr. It is a graphical procedure that is often convenient to use, and it's really very really easy to calculate the normal stress and shear stresses without going through all those bunch of formula that we saw on our previous uh, uh, slides. And how this will work is, in Mohr's circle, the coordinate system is based on a horizontal axis representing normal stress sigma with positive to the right and a vertical axis represent a shear stress tau with the positive downward. Now to construct a circle we need to know center of the circle and a couple of reference point on a circle. First we can plot these reference point like point A which is, has a coordinate of sigma x and tau x and tau x and then the center of the circle has a coordinate of a sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 and 0. Then we have point B also, which is the opposite of point A, has a sigma y and tau x and y. All these coordinates that we need is on the stress element. These points represent the normal and the shear stress components on the element's right hand vertical face and also on the top uh, face of the element. And then we can connect these together, these point together, and we, st we can start begin drawing our circle, and now we know where the, the two reference point is and where the radius is. Where uh, we have this, the radius of the circle basically uh, represent the uh, maximum shear stress. And also, we can calculate the radius uh, either biographically or using the equation. Now, where the circle intercept is sigma, axis we, is a, we have sigma 1 and sigma 2 which we call those the principal stress sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 1 is being bigger than sigma 2 are the coordinate where the circle intersect the sigma axis and these are the uh, could be our maximum and uh, maximum uh, uh, stress once we have that we can based on uh, you look into the triangle we know the dimension of triangle is a simple geometry based on that uh, the triangle and uh, we can calculate the angle of uh, uh, theta and you notice this is two theta the reason is the two theta is because an, uh, an uh, uh, element itself which you rotate is one theta it's 90 degree but in a circle the rotation is two theta that's why we're going to use uh, two theta and also uh, counterclockwise rotation is positive 
Now, let's go ahead and do an example to explain this in more detail. Okay, so let's do this problem. Uh, we have this uh, uh, stress element and with the given information, and this information is a 60 megapascal of shear and normal on one side and the X side, and uh, there's no normal stress on this one, so it's zero. On the Y side, we have uh, 80 megapascal and then uh, shear stress. Now, uh, one thing we wanna do, and the question asked is the question on the board. Take a look at the question. One thing we wanna do is first uh, get our sign package uh, uh, ready and that's uh, tension is equal positive, compression is equal negative, and uh, counterclockwise is also positive for rotation. All right, so now when we look at it, we have this forces compression, there's no, we're gonna say, all right, there is nothing, sigma x is equal zero, they didn't give us that, and sigma y is right there, and that become minus 80 megapascal, and shear, of course, is we have uh, on one side, the rotation is counterclockwise, so it's positive. So shear xy is 80, 60. That's what I meant, 60. So now, we, we, when we want to uh, draw the circle, more circle, we need a bunch of coordinates. We need the center and we need the reference point A or B. Well, this information is given here to us. We can find those reference points, no, no problem. And those are, um, so let's say reference point A, excuse me. Ooh, drop my marker. So let's say reference point A. Uh, reference point A is uh, right here on the X, we have zero. And then for the shear, we have clockwise, clockwise, so that's a plus 60. All right, and then we have the center and B. Let's find B, and which would be the upper on, on the Y side. The B, it's going to be, uh, we're going to have 80 is a compression minus 80. And then we have uh, shear is uh, clockwise, so minus 60. Normally, these two are opposite of each other anyway. Then, let's find the center. Take a look at what we had on the board before. The center is usually uh, sigma x plus sigma y divided by two and zero. And we have uh, sigma x and sigma y divided by two. That comes out to, uh, let's write that down here, I need some space. So we're gonna say, okay, sigma x plus sigma y divided by two, and that is uh, or sigma x uh, zero, and plus minus uh, y was minus 80, and divide that by two, and that comes out to minus 40. So now our center in the circle is gonna be uh, uh, minus 40, and uh, Zip, zero. So uh, now let's plug it in, see if we can find out uh, what do we have. A. Now, when we have this coordinate, this is a, in this coordinate, this is sigma, normal stress, and this is tau, shear stress. It's different than Cartesian coordinate. First, we want to find out what our, please point out. That doesn't mean my center of my circle is right here. The center of the circle could be here, 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 depend where are these coordinates gonna fall into. So let's find point A. Point A is a zero and 60. So it's zero, and that's a zero right here. And 60 is, this is positive down here, by the way. And this is positive this way here. We always know positive being up, but positive on the shear is down. So I got uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and this is my point A, point A, which is uh, 0, 60. All right, let's find point B, minus 80. That's on the X, so I got uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. I think I did that right. Let me double check that. Uh, 
Okay. That'd be number eight would be right here actually. Eighty is right there. Okay, this is eighty right here. And then we have uh, sixty. Twenty, forty, sixty. I didn't do that. Let's do it uh, sixty is gonna become right here. And then we're gonna come in. This way, so this is a point sixty right here, and uh, oh boy, that's a big circle. So, oh, let's find the center to minus forty. Uh, minus forty comes into one, two, three, four, so right here. Exactly. There we go. All right. That's our center, which is uh, C was uh, minus 40 and 0. Okay, let's draw the circle. That's going to be fun. Um, See if I can do that. This is highly sophisticated. Oh. Okay, it took me a couple of try to get the circle right. So here's the circle right there, and this is our center. But one thing we gotta uh, notice for is the uh, where the center of the circle is, and I'd like to do a straight line, to show the center of the circle. So this is the center of our circle right here. There. And uh, we know that distance right here, it's got to be uh, 40. And how do we find that 40 to double check that's a 40? <coughs> Graphically, we know it's 40. Otherwise, we can say, OK, that's the same as uh, stress uh, x minus stress y divided by two. And now that's 40 from here to there. Now for point A, I want to know what this distance right here is, right? This distance here. So this distance, it's going to be shared, which we talked about x, y, and that comes out to 60. All right, so now we got a good thing. And then right here, this is our angle two theta. Counterclockwise. And that's a theta P, and this is angle uh, 2 theta S. Um, the reason is 2 theta, because this block, when it rotates 1 theta, it's only 90 degree. But when this is rotated, it's about 180 degree. And uh, uh, that's why we have 2 times of the other one. It's theta. All right, so we got everything now. We One thing we want to find out right here, where we have... Uh, this point and this point are our principal stress. And let's call those uh, uh, sigma 2 and sigma 1. So this is sigma 2 and this is uh, sigma 1. And we want to find out what these uh, two points are. Well, there's a couple of ways we can solve sigma 1. But, but before doing anything, let's find the radius, what the length of the radius is. Well, it's easy. If we take a look at this uh, triangle right here, uh, this triangle right here, Okay, uh, this triangle here, okay, right here, this triangle, okay, there you go. And this triangle we have, this is 40, and that's a 60 using the Pythagorean theorem. We can find the radius, and the radius basically comes out to, uh, radius is equal, uh, come on, you can do better than that, square root of, uh, I don't like this anymore, fired. 60 squared plus 40 squared. And that should come out to, uh, uh, what do I have? 72.11 megapascal. Okay, so we know this from here to here, this right here is 
maximum shear, and that's 72.11 megapascal. Okay, now we got that out of the way, and let's find this, uh, uh, the uh, principal stress, which the question was asking, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So sigma 1 is equal, uh, right here we had the equation on the board, take a look at it. Uh, it's, uh, and the sigma 1 and sigma 2 basically are sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus or minus the radius. So we say sigma 1 comes out to sigma x plus sigma y plus 2. We already did that, which way was uh, down up here, minus 40. So we got minus 40, and then uh, plus or minus r. Uh, so we're going to be uh, uh, plus this time, and r is uh, 7211. 7211, so that comes out to uh, 32, 3211. 3211 megapascal, and sigma 2 is uh, minus 40 plus uh, R, and R is uh, 72, wait a minute, minus, sorry, that's minus, minus R, so it's minus uh, 72.11, so that comes out to uh, Minus 112 uh, MP.11 MPA. Okay, so now we have these two stresses, and this is a maximum stress is equal to minus 112. And uh, uh, let's uh, find the, uh, the angle, tangent 2 theta. And we know tangent 2 theta p is equal, so we got right here, this here. So this tangent is equal opposite uh, divided by adjacent, so it's uh, opposite is 60. And 60 divided by uh, 40. And if we go ahead and we find out uh, 2 theta p, it's going to come out to, uh, ooh, what do I have? Uh, I have... Uh, in this page here, 5631. And so theta p comes out of half of that 28.1 something, 1.5, I see. Counterclockwise. And so what does it mean? Let's uh, draw something here. This goes blue. So now we have our square block in its place. Um, and this angle is like that, so, and this force is going to be like here, and this is going to be 28, uh, 1, 2, 28.1, 1.2, and uh, this one came out to be uh, 32.11. And it was a positive source tension, 3211. And then we had a negative 112, so compression coming down this way, minus uh, 112. And uh, that's basically it is. And this is going to be coming out at the same angle like that. OK. So that's what it means. So now we found out, let's go find out the uh, um, the shear stress and the angle of the shear stress. I need to erase this and to copy it and give me a minute that I can erase all this stuff. Okay, question B ask, um, okay. Question B ask what's the max in place shear stress or max in place shear stress is where the radius is gonna end. So that's question B right there. It's uh, 72.11, and then uh, uh, which is basically radius. And now to find out the orientation of this angle, how are we going to find that? So we're going to say tangent uh, of 2 theta s is equal. 
Now we have this side of the triangle, which is this one, basically totally opposite of the other side. So it's going to be, uh, instead of 60 over 40, it's going to be 40 over 60, equal 40 over 60. And that means 2 theta comes out to... Uh, um, What do I have? 33.64. And then I have uh, theta comes out to half of that. That's going to be 16 something. 16. 8? Degree. And uh, we're going to have the same thing. So let's go this way. And we have this force here. We're going to have the shear force going this way. So straight angle being this way. And we had shear force this way. And I think this came out to 16.8. 16.8. And we have right here 40 MPA. Uh, and this was a 72.11. All right, so basically that's it. The uh, important thing is when you have the uh, stress element, this information gives you anything you need to draw the circle. One thing you have to remember, tension is positive, compression is negative, and counterclockwise is positive. And you can go ahead and uh, figure out all your forces right here, all your coordinates, I mean. Once you have your coordinate, you can draw the circle and everything is easy from there. Have a good day. Take care. Be well.